In this presentation, we will calculate the amortization of a discount and the recording of the reduction of the discount as well as interest on bonds issued at a discount. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here's gonna be our data on the left side. We're gonna enter that into our general journal and then post that to our worksheet. Our worksheet being in order, assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity light blue, and revenue and expenses in dark blue. Uh, debits being positive numbers in our worksheet, credits being negative, the green zero indicating that the debits minus the credits equal zero or debits equal credits, net income currently at 700,000. We can see that we issued the bond at 198,484. The face amount of the bond was 240,000. So that's going to be here, and that re resulted in our bond on the books, 240000 and a discount of 41516 That being the difference between the face amount of 240 and the issue price, 198 So we have this discount. So now what we're going to say is that we pay these semi-annually. We pay interest semi-annually, so we're going to record our interest payments. When we do so, however, we're also going to have to deal with this discount and the reduction of this uh, payable. Why? Because this is gonna be really due to interest in a way. This difference is due to the market rate being assumed to be different from the rate on the contract. And that's why we have this difference. So we're gonna treat this reduction of the payable as kind of a type of interest, meaning we are going to uh, expense it or put it on the income statement as we uh, pay our normal interest payments, which in this case is semi-annual. So to do that, we'll first do a little calculation over here. We're going to do this with a straight line method. Uh, the effective method is a preferred method. It's going to be a little bit more exact in terms of applying the interest out, but the straight line is uh, an easy method for us to understand. It can be used if the amount between the two methods is uh, not materially different. And it really kind of lines up to what we see with uh, other types of amortization methods if we're amortizing or depreciating something like equipment it's more like it's just a straight line method so that's what we want to take a look at we'll take a look at an effect an effective method uh, a different type of method which will change slightly in terms of the amount that will be amortized each period in a later presentation so what we're going to have here is we're going to start off with our discount and we know that the discount we could just pull it from our numbers so i'm just going to say the discount equals this number now don't pull it from the trial balance because that'll that'll change the ending trial balance if we pull it from the beginning trial balance we can say okay that's our beginning number and then the carrying amount is going to be the original amount minus the discount so i'm going to take this number i'm going to flip the sign subtracting the discount from it so in other words it's going to be negative i'm going to take the 240 so that makes it a positive and then i'm going to say minus this 41,516. So in other words, what we're saying here is we, the bonds on the books for uh, 240,000 minus the discount gives us what we actually paid for it at the beginning of the bond, 198,44. That's gonna be the carrying amount before any payments have been made. We're gonna make a uh, semi-annual interest payments and we're gonna reduce the carrying amount or reduce the unamortized amount each uh, of those pay periods. So that means we're gonna take the amortization here, which is gonna be equal to, it's just gonna be straight line, this 41,516, and we'll divide it by the number of periods. Now this is a little bit tricky because there's 15 uh, years semi-annual, so that would be 30 periods. So I'm gonna divide it by 30. So again, 
This is actually a common problem, and there's a couple different ways we can calculate it. If we take the, the unamortized discount, 41516, and divide it by the number of years, what's given in the problem, 15, then we're going to take that and divide it by 2, because we're at semi-annual, divided by 2, and that gives us this number about, it's rounded, as we can see. Or, you take the uh, 41516, divided by the number of periods, which is 15 years times 2, divided by 30, and that'll give us the same amount. So whatever works best for you to think through that. Then we're just going to take the unamortized premium minus what has been amortized. So this equals this minus this and enter. And that's going to be the 41, uh, uh, 132. And then the carrying amount is always going to be 240,000 minus whatever the unamortized premium is. So again, I'm going to do that with a little bit of a formula negative negative of this number over here, make sure to pick the beginning number because this number will change, so of the trial balance, and then minus, we're gonna take the 40,132. So it's just like this one, we took the negative 40 minus the unamortized, we're gonna take that same uh, negative 40, or it's gonna that makes it a positive 40, <laughs> minus the 40,132. We'll take the negative of this 240, uh, make sure not to pick this one up. We're going to pick up the, the first one because this number will change as we make journal entries. And then we're going to subtract out the 40,132. So this is always the unamortized amount. We're going to take the original, the bond payable, which won't change until the end. And then we'll subtract out the, uh, the unamortized amount. So it's just like this first one, 240 minus the 41. And then of course this went down and now we'll do it again. So if we do this a, a second time, and note we're jumping forward in time, this is the bond, this is six months later, and then six months later because we're paying uh, every six months. So now we're gonna say this will be the same because it's straight line, the amount that we're gonna amortize each month. And note, we're not actually paying this amount, we will be paying interest each time. This is gonna be allocating out the amount of the uh, discount that we're going to be reducing. So we're gonna say this equals the 1,384. And then once again, the unamortized amount will equal what was unamortized before minus the current amount that we're gonna reduce it by. And then the carrying amount once again will be negative of the 240, which doesn't change, minus the 38,748. And we're just gonna keep on doing this uh, all the way down until we've completely reduced this amount to zero and we will then be at the end of the bond term. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this all the way down and we'll see that this amortized amount will go down and down until it reaches zero at the end of 30 payments. So to do that, I'm gonna copy it down one time, this whole row, and then see what happens to it and then we'll continue to copy it down. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna highlight these three cells or select them. Then we're gonna use the auto fill, fill and see if we can just copy it down and see if it does what we expect it to do. So we'll copy that down. And this looks right. This looks right because this is just equaling the cell above it. This one is subtracting out the correct two. That's what we would want. This one, however, looks funny. Why? Because it's picking up this cell and that's not what we want. So what I'm gonna do instead is delete this and try to do it again. And we're gonna say, what if I pick up this cell? I want this not to change when I copy it down. And when I moved it down, it takes the relative one and goes down. So to do that, I'm gonna uh, use an absolute reference. So this cell, I'm just gonna say F4 on the keyboard, push F4, or type in a dollar sign before the H and a dollar sign before the six. We don't need two dollar signs, but it, it doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna say, okay. And then we'll copy this down one time. I'll highlight it, copy it down one time. So there we have it. Now it looks like it's doing what we want. That looks right, that looks right, that looks right. So this is gonna keep going down until it gets down to zero. And this is going to uh, keep going until it gets to the carrying amount of 240. So we've added the dates and note the year isn't here, but of course we're, we're talking about the next year each time. So this is, uh, you know, six months later from the, from the beginning. Then we've got the end of the year, six months later, and now we're in the next year. So we're always jumping up six months. 
So if we, if we go then and we highlight this all the way down, I'm gonna select these cells, gonna go all the way down to 30 payments uh, or, or 30 of the amortizations that we're going to be making here and just auto fill this all the way down to 30. We could see that it, it does what we would expect. It's going down evenly by 1,384 till it gets to zero and then we're at the 240. So the, at the end of 30 periods, at the end of 15 years, two times a year, we will be down to being left with just the 240 and this will be at zero. And then of course we'll make that final payment of the 240. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna record the first one of these. So we'll, we're recording this one. I'm gonna make it a different color so that we could see it as we record it. So first question is cash affected. We're gonna say it is not because of this spreadsheet but because we're gonna record both the payment that we make as well as the reduction or amortization of the discount at the same time. So cash is going down. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna copy cash. I'm gonna put that on the bottom, right click and paste one, two, three. Now the amount that we're gonna pay in cash is gonna be equal to the face amount of the bond times the uh, carrying uh, rate or the, the amount on the bond, meaning we're gonna pay in accordance with the contract on the bond. So we're gonna use the two amounts that will physically be on the bond. The issue price is not physically on the bond, neither is the market price. The things on the bond, the promise we made, is to pay uh, 240,000 of the face amount times the interest rate stated on the bond. So that's what we're gonna have. Now to calculate that, it's gonna be 240,000 times the rate on the bond, 0.06, 6%. That would be for a year. We're gonna divide that by two. So 2,700. Or we can say, well, okay, well, the rate is 0.06 for a year. If we divide that by two, it would be 3% times the face amount 240,000. So two ways we can do that. Let's do that over here. It's gonna be a credit. So I'm in E4 negative 240,000 times 0.06 divided by two. So there we have it. I'm gonna indent this, home tab, alignment, increase indenting, probably done for you already. Okay, so then we're gonna have the uh, the amount we paid, the reduction in the print of uh, the uh, discount. So here's the discount. We need it to go down. It's helpful to have a trial balance because it'll tell us that a discount has a debit balance. And you know a discount has a debit balance because it's kind of the opposite of the bond. It has to bring the bond down. The bond payable is a liability. This must have a debit balance then. In order to make it go down, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it. We're gonna credit it. So I'm gonna copy, right click and copy and put that in C5, right click and paste one, two, three. We're gonna increase the indenting and that's gonna be a credit and that's gonna be a credit for the amount we determined over here. So I'm gonna do that with a formula negative of this number. Then we need a debit, and that debit is going to go to the uh, bond interest, the expense. So I'm going to right click and copy. And expenses have debit balances, they only go up the debit direction. Put that in C3, right click and paste 123. It's going to be the sum of these two 2007 plus the 1384. Now, this is the part that's really kind of confusing to most people because we can understand why we're expensing the 7200 because we paid that. It's interest expense just like a loan. This we didn't pay, why are we doing it? Because the difference between these two, when we put it on the books, is the difference between the carrying value, uh, it's the difference between the face amount of the bond and the issue price. And the reason for that is a difference in interest rates between market and the bond rate. So therefore, we're gonna put this difference to interest and we're gonna, we're gonna record it into interest as we go through the bond term. So we're gonna add these two up. I'm gonna do that with our negative sum formula. It's gonna be 8,584 in D3, negative SUM. Double click the sum function. Now you could try to move this out of the way or go from the bottom to the top, or you can move this out of the way and go from the top to the bottom. There it is. If we post this out, here's the bond interest. Here it is here. We're in the middle column in I12 equals Point to that 8,584, bringing the balance up, net income down. Then we've got cash. We're gonna be in I3 equals 2007 
bring your cash down. And then the discount in I7 equals pointing to the discount and enter, bringing the discount down. Note what is not happening, we're not paying the bond down. And some people have problem with that because often we, we're used to loans like a mortgage where we pay both interest and principal. Here we're not paying any of the principal until the end. Therefore, this is just gonna remain on the books. All we're doing is paying the rent on the money, the, the interest. We're not paying the principal down. We're gonna pay it all off in a lump sum at the end. Now we can see we, we match the amortization table, this number uh, equaling this number, the unamortized discount, the carrying value, if we take this minus this, 199.868 is here, 199.868. Now we'll do this one more time. I'm gonna make this blue again, and then make this one green. Let's do this one more time. Very similar journal entry as of the end of the year. So that's why I kind of made this 12-1 instead of 1-1 so we can have two payments in the same year here. So we've got 12-1 and same thing. We're gonna pay cash. So the cash, I'm gonna copy the cash. It's gonna be the same journal entry and same calculation. So we're gonna say this is a negative. So I'll put negative 240,000 face amount times 0.06, 6%, the contract rate divided by two. So there is that and I'll indent this home tab alignment increase indenting, then the discount copy paste. I'm going to paste this one normal so that it'll indent for us. And then the amount then is just going to be this amount, but it's going to be a credit. So same amount because we're using a straight line method, negative of that number. And then those are going to go to the expense. So I'm going to copy the expense, same transaction, negative sum, adding these up, 8,584 using the plug formula, negative sum. And then again, if this is in the way, it's faster to just go from the bottom to the top, or you can move it out of the way, but there you go. Okay, then we'll post this out. We'll have bond interest, bond interest. We're gonna say plus 8,584, bringing the interest up, net income down, cash. It's gonna go here, double click, something's in it, go to the end of it, plus, 7,002, bringing the cash down. And then the bond discount here, double click, go to the end of it, plus, and we're gonna pick up that 1,384 and enter. Now we're left with, once again, the bond doesn't go down. We're just paying off the interest and we're reducing the discount to interest. And note, you could do this with two journal entries if, and it might make it uh, more sense to some people, meaning we could, make a journal entry saying cash is going down by 7,200 and then debit the uh, expense and then make another journal entry saying that the bond discount is going down by 1,384 and debit the bond interest expense, debiting interest expense twice. Most textbooks will combine the two, however, uh, in, in practice. So it's probably good to see them uh, in that format. But if it makes sense to you to break them out, then break it out. Okay, so then we're gonna have this matching out over here. So we've got the 240 minus the 38,748 is 201, 252, that being the carrying amount. And of course the unamortized amount is the 38,748. 